What's up, people? It's another beautiful day, and we're back on my home lake, and what we're gonna do today is gonna be awesome. Hey, we got the new 16-inch monitor on the boat. This will be the second video with it on the boat. I'm excited. Been doing a lot of guide trips with it for the first time. Gonna share those experiences with you, but today we're doing active captain, chasing schools, that's all we're doing. And then we're gonna talk about the number one topic that gets brought up on these guide trips. People come on this boat and they, they are a monofilament, a four carbon guy. They leave this boat and they can't wait to get sniping braid or a braid product in their hand. Whichever one you wanna choose, doesn't matter. I'm just gonna tell you right now, we're making believers out of people that think that mono and fluorocarbon are the way to go. And I'm gonna tell you right now, crappie fishing is moving in a different direction and braid is part of that direction. Folks, as I was editing this video, Sniping Braid has just reduced their price to $10.99 for the next three days. So today, Sunday through Tuesday, you can get Sniping Braid for $10.99, which is crazy good. So fill up your reels. This is the time to do it. Go to snipingbraid.com. A lot of people are worried about things. We're gonna talk about all that, but Active Captain, a discussion on fishing line, and uh, yeah, this new 16 inch monitor, check it out. That is a big change on this boat. Let me tell you, it is a big screen and uh, the guide trips have, uh, we've had fun with. This is the fourth day, three guide trips in a row and then bam, we're here doing a video and we've been slaughtered. So thanks for watching folks, here we go. Thanks for watching Three Pound Fishing. We partnered up with these fantastic companies. A successful guide trip. It's got stuff all over it, slimy fish stuff. So we're gonna clean that up. We're gonna we're gonna start with that. Now I don't know if it's right or wrong, but this is how I clean it. I use some glass cleaner. I keep in the boat. I always keep one of these towels here in the boat. And this is kind of the. I don't know if that's the right way. Share your comment. I'd like to know. All right. So that's a small spool. Nothing to brag about there. And, but, we require a very accurate cast. And there it is. And there's their first fish, first cast of the episode. And this is a good fish. I can feel by its wackiness. I can tell it's a good fish. Oh, you gotta love it, folks. We're out here bright and early. It's like 35 degrees. I am cold right now. There's no doubt about it. First cast on the active captain, nonetheless. So look at that. That's a beautiful fish. Fatty right there. So let them go, of course. Um, let's start off by talking about this mount. Now, Corkville Crappie Gear hooked me up with this mount. Um, it is a custom made. It is shorter than what will be available, I think, immediately. But I think they're considering doing a, a smaller option like this. I wanted it to be smaller so it could accommodate the casting seat and a regular seat. So here's a look at it right here. And that's that 16 inch Garmin in all of its glory. I turned up, I didn't realize that I had been working with it at 75% backlight. So I turned up the backlight all the way up and now it is just booming. And if you notice, I'm starting to use this black emerald, whatever this green color is, because on guide trips, people are used to using it. And I said, why not? We'll use it today. And uh, I haven't switched back to amber yet. We'll see if that's long-term, but right now I'm kind of digging the green and it really does make everything really pop. So, and then of course, uh, well, let's put another fish in the boat. Right now, we're not fishing really big schools, that's for sure. Uh, but I'll cast out to that guy and just see if we can't get some takers. Sometimes these smaller schools, they are aggressive. There you go. There it is. Oh, see, they're pretty aggressive when they're in those small schools for some reason. Uh, you can't always target the big, the big schools, but this is a really good fish. This, this is a picture of fish right here. Look at that. That's a great fish. Bam! That is a big fish. That's a good fish for my lake. Thick, thick, thick. Let's talk about braid line and all that other stuff. We're gonna let this guy go. Boom. Oh. All right. This is uh, this is my talk part of the uh, the uh, the episode, I guess. The uh, the number one thing that happens on guide trips, I can tell you, 
as of right now in the last probably for the last three months um, is people get on the boat and they are fluorocarbon or mono primarily mono because mono is inexpensive has a lot of stretch makes it i think it's well i think inexpensive is probably the, the best way to describe it and it's usually how anglers start with crappie fishing um i struggle well and i did the same thing i went with monofilament then i you go to fluorocarbon which does not have as much as stretch it's it's a little it's a little densely packed um it's a harder less stretched it's uh, i always say it's a harder line it burns really quick if you're doing your knots um, but i was a big believer in fluorocarbon for a very long time and i struggled with going to braid because i was always worried about uh tangles and i'm gonna tell you folks that's not the case anymore um everybody that gets on this boat i'm i'm, I'm just 90% of them, 95% of people leave this boat purchasing sniping braid because they fall in love with how smooth it is to cast out there. And it's not the tangled mess that I think I experienced when I started with braid. So I always give them some pointers on how not to tangle up. I mean, number one with braid, I'll tell you right off the bat. Number one with braid is that you always have to leave slack in your line if, so here's my jig head, right? Here's my, there's my split shot, right? You cannot, have that all the way up to the tip of your rod because now every time you touch this rod it makes it want to flip around your your rod tip right it becomes a disaster so i always tell people that if you're not casting you need to be keeping six feet of line out you're dragging it essentially because now if you hit this it's not going to do anything it's not going anywhere so that's going to that's always tip number one when we go on a guide trips and sometimes people still do it you know they bring it all the way up because they're excited and they forget and then all of a sudden it gets wrapped up there but then they pick up on it they understand and the rest of the guide trip they're like this and by the end of the guide trip they, what they fall in love with is there's no drag from the line going through the eyelets from fluorocarbon or mono and it is silky smooth silky smooth uh, not to mention the other benefit which is sensitivity you're going to feel absolutely everything and the fact that you can set the hook on an extremely light bite so because you can feel it through the braid you can set the hook with braid there's no stretch there's no nothing um boom you just set that hook and i'm telling you right now check out sniping braid it is no joke it will get it done snipingbraid.com now for my gear just real quick ozark rods this is an old gray one but my go-to rods 10 footers are my three pound fishing elite series from ozark rods they're right here i just picked up these are all tangled up from the guide trip three pound fishing tackle jig heads and these are the perfect jig head they the eyelet is what i'm referring to it is perfect i never lose braid through the eyelet because they're not completely closed and these are like that so you check out three pound fishing tackle but let's go back we're gonna active captain we are going to put some fish in the boat we have put some fish in the boat let's do it folks this is a really good school i just saw here let's see if we can find them again hopefully i didn't spook them there they are look at this now look i'll just drop down sometimes there i am dropping down and i'll just place it as they go underneath the boat and they're probably just a little bit spooked by the boat so i don't know if i'll even get a bite but we're going to try to get in front of them now you know where they're at they're behind the boat right so we're circling around see you guys just gotta find them and they did kind of run a little bit um, and they are still running but now we're on the chase the other thing i want you guys to know about braid just so you know that it is i mean this braid's been on here for gosh two weeks it still doesn't break but that's not to say that braid won't break because there is no give um, i think it's important that you do strip off the top layer if you haven't because it is a micro braid and it is going to wear so I, i've seen a lot less with this stuff i can tell you but let's be real it's braid so it's going to it is going to break if you don't wrap take off maybe the, the top layer once in a while so there i am right there see if these guys are takers yet yep they are there he is boom so a lot of times when these schools run they're not as active i mean you could pick one off like that just occasionally but when they're running and they are right now because they're fuzzy you see how they're fuzzy it's just a little guy though um they're not going to be as receptive to accepting bait so i'm always looking for schools that are kind of um uh, well they're quiet they're still and this is these guys are really moving now there it is 
There it is. So we talk about like the size of the fish in a school. This is a big school. At least the fish so far haven't been that big, even though it's a larger school. And uh, not, that's a good eater right there. That's a, probably a 10 and a half, but I'm still a good eater. But there are some big fish still in these. Now these guys are really slowing down now, which is what we wanted to see. And now we can sit back just a little bit. Get on the brakes a little, pump the brakes a little. There we go. And there he comes. And there he is. We can do this all day long, folks. This is a better fish. Uh, so it's a mixed bag right now, it seems like, out here on the lake. Right there, good fish there. So we're gonna let that school go on. We're gonna find another school. Right now, we're kind of over the, the creek bottom. I hear I'll have to even expand to 35, looks like, to get to it. Yeah, maybe not even 35. Look at these guys. These guys are swimming in some seriously deep water. They're a little, perhaps a little deeper than I, I like. There he comes. And there we got one. Oh, did he let go? Oh, that should have been a good fish. That would have been a good fish. Really small pile now, four fish. These tend to be the better fish. That should be right on them. More time on the water, guys, is, you know, you're gonna get better and better with the accuracy. Here, we're right on them again. See that line's popping a little bit. Hopefully you guys can see that on an active captain, but. There he is, bam. That's gonna end it, folks. What a great day on the water. Great morning. I gotta tell you, it's kinda cold though. So, do me a favor, subscribe. Great day on the water, folks. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching 3 Pound Fishing, partnered up with these fantastic companies.